Our Portugal Stonehouse renovation continues at pace today. In this very busy episode, Tara and the boys leave the farm and head to Africa. I'm left alone, facing raging storms and bad weather, getting stuck into some of the gnarlier projects the Stonehouse has to offer, while the boys are safely out of harm's way. It's week one of an intensive two-week rush to get as much built as possible before Tara and the boys return. I can hear a tractor. I can hear the hum of an engine over on Joao's farm. And today's a big day. John gets really excited about all the projects down on the garden and on the lawn. But for me, it is all about growing food and being up here at the veggie garden. And it is finally time for the tractor to come and get the field ready for us to start making beds and prepare for the growing season ahead. Because we've got so much building going on at the stone house, our entrance to the farm is currently blocked with a giant pile of wood, a couple of pallets of tiles, um, and a cement mixer and a whole kind of, well, a building site. So he can't come in the usual way he normally does. So we've tried to fashion an entrance through the back of the farm, through Joao's farm, Fingers crossed it works. Otherwise, well, we've got a lot of work to do. Do you see the tractor? I see him too. Is he coming from Joao's farm, buddy? Let's go then. I'll ask him to come. Okay, let's go. Hey, Dad, the tractor's coming. What? Yeah. It's coming again. The tractor's coming through, so. He might be doing Armando's field first and then coming here later. They're trying to find a way through. Because that sounds like they're demolishing trees. It does. Oh dear. Bye. It's a beautiful morning though, isn't it? There he is. Okay. They've found a way around. Led by the ever amazing Armando and Joao. I see that, yeah. They're leading the way like uh, <laughs> Pied Piper. Piper tractor pipe her. Yeah. Let's go and see where they're going to come through, shall we? Come on, boys. So in preparation for the tractor to come, the compost has been emptied entirely and spread all over the field by Joao. He strimmed it all back and now the tractor is going to come and turn it into the soil and, well, give all of this goodness into the ground, which is great. Isn't that beautiful? What? Oh, um, it's the leaves from our um, leeks. While I'm away, you've got a lot of leeks to eat. They're all in the fridge. <laughs> okay. Yum, yum. Tara, by the way, everybody, is heading to Zimbabwe tomorrow. I'm mm -hmm. left alone for two weeks to build a house. And if it's not built by the time you get back? By the time you get back. I mean, I get back? Yeah. What? Trouble. That looked like I was rubbing you out, but I'm not going to rub you out. Look, Crusoe, it's Agostinho and Armando. He's in. He made it. Bon dia. Bon dia. Senor Agostinho is the tractor driver, the Mario equivalent of tractor drivers, basically. He's incredible with his little tractor. Um, and it's always so great to have him here because big things happen. So clever that tractor, isn't he? So in case you've missed my ramblings in previous episodes, this makes me feel really sad. Um, I don't like seeing soil turned over like this. I know too much about it to know that this is not the very best way to look after the soil on your farm. I've talked in the past about having watched the um, documentary Kiss the Ground and the importance of soil health. And having been to places like FarmEd in the UK and learning all about soil health, I, I know that turning the soil like this every year is not the best thing for the soil. But 
this is how we need to manage a space this big for now. My plan is, and if you've seen in previous episodes, I have started a small no-dig experiment at the front here of the veggie garden. And my plan is to slowly expand that over the coming years and to eventually get the space to a place where it is a no-till garden and that we are having minimal disturbance on the soil. So this is kind of, I feel in my mind, a necessary evil for just right now. Um, but our intentions for the future are sound and we will get there. The, the things that we've spoken about in the past before, which I won't go into in too much detail, because if you have watched it, you'll, you know, you've heard it all before, but the cost of trying to turn this overnight into a no-dig garden would, you know, be in excess of 7,000 euros to get all of the compost and the um, cardboard and everything that we would need in order to set it up, which is just a crazy amount of money to spend on setting up a garden. You might as well just buy your own food, right? So. Um, you might as well just shop for the stuff you were growing in the supermarket. So this is kind of, you know, trying to balance the two. And slowly, slowly we'll build it up and we'll get to a place where it feels a little bit more in keeping with how I would be liking to run this, this area. But in the defence of this system, the guys around here, Armando and Joao and his family and all of our neighbours, every single year for the last 50, 60 years, are farming like this and they have incredible success. Um, and their soil is so healthy and they, you know, they, they get incredible produce and it's all, it's still small scale farming, right? It's not large scale commercial farming, which is the thing that is doing more damage to our ecosystems and our environment than anything else. My plan with the beds this year is to be a lot more creative with it, to be a lot more varied, to plant a lot more flowers as well as vegetables, to encourage biodiversity and to encourage the ecosystem to bring lots of wildlife and pollinators and all sorts. So yeah, I think, you know, it's all about balance, isn't it? It is all about balance. But for me, it's just a jolly exciting day because it just means like we can get going, you know? A couple of months from now, we'll be eating our own food from the, the, the garden. And this year, so much of that, I would have grown from seed myself in the greenhouse, which is just cool. It's just really, really cool. Oh, you found your pliers, that's good news, well done. Anyway, enough of me rabbiting on this. What's the tactic, shall we? You wanna go too, Betty? Yeah. Hold my hand, let's go. So it's so sweet of you. Everything, everything Crusoe does, he wants to do. So then he goes, do. Ooh, which is short for me too. Literally two days ago, we were all in shorts and t-shirts. It was about 24 degrees. And now overnight, I think it's 11 degrees and it's really chilly. Um, it feels like someone left the fridge door open. Yeah, not 11 degrees, it's colder. Colder than 11 degrees. Yeah, 11 degrees tops. Top, top temperature today of 11 degrees. Right now it's probably about eight or seven or eight. Very cold. Anyway, hopefully it warms up again. No, I don't mind, I'm off to Africa. Sunshine today. Okay team, well that's it. Um, the tractor's just about done with this first run of the field. He'll be back I think next week just to finish it off and make it easier to, to plant into. But that means two things. Well, that means one really important thing. My wife and two children are now about to leave me and go to Africa. And I'm gonna be here building all on my own without distractions and hopefully we're gonna be able to get so much done that when Crusoe, Sawyer and Tara get home, everything's ready and, well, not ready, but we're definitely heading towards a place where we can say, all right, let's start knocking stuff down. Okay, that's it. Mm, it's a sad moment. I've just dropped the boys and Tara off at the airport. They're on their way to Zimbabwe. So what to do? I'm here all alone for the next two weeks. The plan is for me to try and get as much work done as possible without the distractions of having two young boys running around, picking up my hammers and running off with my tape measures. Um, it is raining at the moment and it's forecast to rain for the next five days, five or six days constantly. So I think what I'm gonna do is go inside the stone house here and start looking at ripping stuff out and, and see whether we can put stuff back together again as well, of course. So that'll be the starting point. Just to let everybody know, 
Tara and the boys are going to be checking in with us from Zimbabwe and for the next couple of weeks whilst they're away they'll also be checking in regularly with us letting us know what they're getting up to. I'm sure there'll be plenty of elephants involved, maybe some giraffe and lots of adventures. So no need to go over to the Explore channel to watch any of that. We'll be posting it over here, right here, in between me doing some jobs around the farm. Okay, let's go in the stone house. Let's have a look at what needs to be done. I think Tara wants me to start off with the bathroom. This everybody is the bathroom. We've been in here before. The first job is the only, well, the absolutely the first job is to rip it to pieces. Let's get all of those tiles off. Let's get the toilet out. Let's get the sink out, the bidet, the shower. Knock it back to the wall so that we can have a look what's behind those tiles. Get that boiler out as well. What a daft place for a boiler. And also I would like to have a look and see what kind of lintel we've got above that door because that's a very low door as well. It would be really great to think that we can somehow raise that up just a little bit so that nobody's banging their head on it again. Um, so straight on with it. Get the old hammer out. We have to have the plumbing first. Spanner, wrenches, and do everything. Days like today where I just wish I could get a proper plumber to come in and help. Two and a half years of being here, I haven't been able to find anybody to come and do it for me, so... That's always a little bit disappointing, isn't it? stuck those tiles on super duper strong so I don't know how I'm going to get them off really easily. The, I suppose the easiest way would be to put a board over the top of them and then tile onto that board. That would mean that we would be losing quite a lot of space in the, in the room. We would lose three centimeters of the, of the wall space if we did that. Um, 
which I don't think would be a massive problem at either end of the wall, but it's going to be a huge problem here and here because we're going to be narrowing out the, the whole bathroom. I think I've just got to get I think I've just got to get all of the tiles off the wall and just accept it's going to take a really long time. I'm going to get some gloves. <clears throat> I think it's going to take the best part of a day to get them all off, including the floor tiles. We're going to want to get those up. That shower, gosh, the dude that put that shower in place meant it to be there forever. That was hard work pulling it out. And the cement he's fixed it with, it's like, I don't know, like they were, like he was planning on building the Empire States building. Who knows? But anyway, there we have it. It's coming along quite nicely. The space starts to feel, well, you know, well, you know how it is when you clear a cupboard. Everything feels a little bit easier to organize, easier to envisage. So here we are. We've got pretty much everything out and I'm starting to get a feel for what the space is looking like. Now, total full transparency. I am currently trying my hardest to find an actual real plumber to come and help me do the job. Um, unfortunately, around this area, the waiting time for a decent plumber is a long, long time. Um, and to be honest, I don't really know anybody around here who could probably help. So um, that's the way That's the way it is. It's a bit of a shame. Um, we, I, I, you know, I just don't want to do the plumbing myself. So... I've got my fingers crossed um, for a plumber to come and help me out because I think what I've got in mind is um, is that it's going to be a little bit tricky. Like, it's not going to be an easy project. I, first of all, I don't want this in the bathroom anymore. I want to put it outside. So we're going to need pipes coming out. We need to connect this house to a new septic tank that I'm getting for the big build. Um, and we'll see, we'll see, well, again, you know, it's just a, like... Who connects a septic tank up who's never done it before? I suppose the person who learns how to do it, but that's not something I'm particularly interested in learning how to do. So, um, I've asked Celia, Mario's mate, um, to come and help us, uh, to, to help us find a plumber in the local area. I've also asked Joao, who's helping me out today, um, to, to try and find me a plumber as well. So we've got all the feelers out, fingers crossed. It's coming along nicely and actually I've just literally had a quick meeting with Celia and Mario. They popped around to say hello um, about getting a plumber in here. And so fingers crossed in three weeks time, give or take, this is Portugal, um, we may or may not um, have a plumber coming in to help us out, which I think would be a really smart idea. I've got big plans for that and I want to get it right. And I just want it to be really, really great when it's finished. So for now, we'll crack on, we'll get the tiles off, we'll dig out a few bits and pieces, we'll wait for the plumber um, and move on to a different project while we wait.
So um, right here in this corner, we've got a step that's a lot longer than the rest of the steps. It's also a little bit too high for what I want. The ultimate ambition, and I'm not sure whether this is gonna work, but we're gonna have a go and certainly investigate in the next few days, is to try and lower this step and get rid of it completely. I, I just, it would be really, really great that if what I'm standing on now wasn't that high, it was actually this high, the height of the step below. Um, and the reason for that is I'm gonna try and lower the ground or lower the floor in this room here so that the door then becomes a little bit taller and we stop banging our heads every time we walk in and out of it. Um, that's a different story and that's coming up in, in future episodes. We're, we're definitely going to need to do some digging down and having a look and seeing quite how solid and how far down these rocks go. You know, what I don't want to be doing is digging down, lowering the floor by 15 centimetres and finding out that there's no foundations down there. There's a strong chance that that might be the case. Um, but in order to prepare for that, what we want is a step that starts here at this level. Hopefully you're following me. So, um, so everything comes 15 centimetres lower up until here, where we step then up onto this step. And, I, and, and basically I just want to make this step here a little bit longer and this step here a little bit shorter. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start chopping into it, hacking away and get rid of some of that. And hopefully that's just going to make the whole area here a lot more usable um, and, and well prepare for the possibility that we start lowering the floor here. So it's this step here that we're going to chop back to around about here so that we will have a, a little bit of a walkway here for the step below. And this step then becomes a similar length to all of the rest of the steps up there. Yeah. Look the difference for these blocks yeah. and for blocks in love. Yeah, the bricks. You touch in the new bricks. They the smash, yeah. Yeah. These blocks <laughs> in the big gamma. <laughs> They're <laughs> like <laughs> not work. That's so true. So I was saying the 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 blocks that we're getting at the moment, you know, the breeze blocks that we've been using, they're so brittle compared. These ones are like well like rock. Alright, you can have a go as well. See how you get on.
turn. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Oh, that's hard. Hard work. Good turn now. That is a lot better, folks. Love it.